Hey all, it's Carly. Welcome back to High Country Homesteading. It's officially fall and it definitely feels like fall here in the mountains. So today we're gonna clean off and decorate the front porch with all the good stuff. We've got pumpkins, we've got hay, we have some vintage pieces that I picked up from a local store in town. So I want to go piece by piece with you and show you how I'm gonna be decorating step by step. It's in um, the low 50s here and the highs are in the high 60s. So we're definitely in fall mode, still super pleasant outside, not too chilly, especially if you're dressed right. But summer is definitely long gone. There is no sign of it left. All fireflies are gone. The warm sun is gone and the wind's starting to pick up. So it's definitely fall here in the Appalachian Mountains and we're gonna get this front porch spruced up. There's a lot of sweeping that needs to be done before and after we finagle with all the straw and things like that, but I'm just giving my little front porch rug here a little sweep off, make sure that it's all nice and clean so that when we decorate, everything looks real good. I'm also gonna wipe down the windows. This window from the front door hasn't been sprayed or cleaned in probably quite a while and I don't know about you but I've always only had one side light on my front doors in any house that I've ever lived in though every picture that you see of these beautiful front porch decorations online everybody has these beautiful symmetry of a side light on either side of their door let me know if you have that problem and what you would do if you only had one instead of one on each side because I like some symmetry, but I seem to never choose a home that has it. I found this little guy holding on for dear life. He didn't care whether I was cleaning or not, but he's probably just praying that he doesn't get fed to the chickens. So we went to a local farm at their pumpkin patch this past weekend, and we got all the goods. I also picked up some vintage pieces from a local store in town that has an amazing warehouse full of things. I've got this stool some vintage apple crates as well as these crocs that i'm going to be putting some mums in so i got started first decorating with the vintage pieces i have never had these kinds of items before to decorate this i decided that this year was the year last year i used the straw bales and mums and pumpkins but this year i felt like i just needed that touch more and it would really be my absolute perfect decoration. So I started arranging these things the way I thought I wanted them. I wanted these pieces specifically because I like to have different layers to my decoration. So the stool adding different height um, and everything's not just kind of laying on the same even field. I like having a bit of height and difference to my designs. So I'm gonna do a little bit of finagling around. I decide that I want the straw there first instead of having the stool behind it because it just looks kind of awkward having the straw away from the wall. So I decided that the stool should probably go in front of it and it still adds that good height difference where I can put pumpkins directly on the straw and then the mums can be up in the air. So I'm gonna do a little finagling around with all of these items and then we can start adding flowers and pumpkins. Here's my PSA where I'm going to tell you, please water your mums. I absolutely will not. I never do. These are going to be crispy in about a week and I will promise to do my best with them, but I'm going to tell you, water your mums. Don't forget, I'm going to forget, but I want you to have healthy looking mums all fall long and I know myself, I'm not going to. If anything, it's gonna be my husband who will remember every once in a while when he sees how sad they are from how I'm not taking care of them. But I want you to water your mums and be far more successful with them than I ever am. I 
I'm obsessed with the collection of pumpkins I got this year. The family farm we went to, they have children in the same class as my children at preschool and it was so fun getting to play with them and picking out all of these different pieces. I definitely uh, probably overstayed my welcome and I just kept going and going and adding to my pile but I'm so happy with all the different colors and shapes and sizes and I love the ones that are bumpy. Um, like I said, I want to have some different heights going on, so I tried to get some that were tall, some were short, and get all the different levels and variety going on. So I'm just going to start situating these, making a mix of color on both sides, making a mix of height, and seeing how I like it. So I do have chickens and I've done a little experiment to see if they would absolutely wreck this display that I'm setting up and it would all be for naught. But any spoiled, well not spoiled, but any pumpkin that just didn't work out in my garden, uh, maybe fell off the stem or just didn't ripen to its fullest potential, I have given to my chickens so they could eat it up. But I've noticed that if I don't split the pumpkin open and it just, it's just in its full form, they do not eat it. They don't even peck at it whatsoever. Only if I cut the pumpkin open, they will eat the whole thing up. So I am thinking that because all of these pumpkins are whole and they're not cut and they don't have splits in them, I don't think my chickens are gonna be coming up on my porch and pecking at my pumpkins. They don't usually come up on the porch anyway, only to maybe eat some seeds that are in the bird feeder but we since moved that away so that they don't come on the porch anymore but I'll be interested to see if they find this display a little bit curious because we didn't have chickens at this time last year and we let them roam around the yard freely so I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see if they find this of any interest and if they do we might have to make some kind of adjustment but I think from my experiment so far I think the pumpkins are gonna be safe from any kind of chicken wrath. For the finishing touch, I picked up this dried wheat wreath from the same nursery that I got the mums from and I love it. It just adds a special little touch to the door. It has a little bit of dried corn in it as well and I just loved how it turned out. And so we went all the way from this to this big beautiful front porch. I absolutely love it. I had tears in my eyes when I stepped back when I was all finished and that may sound silly but this is truly one of the things that brings me the most joy that I've never been able to do. Last year was my first year that I had ever even attempted decorating my front porch. It was our first fall in the countryside after moving and it's just something that brings me so much joy. It's so colorful. It brings my children joy. It brings my home just joy and color and cheerfulness and it makes people who come to my home feel welcome and that's all the things that I'm trying to achieve and it just really feels special and homey and bright and beautiful to me and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm so proud of myself too because this is one of the first videos that I made on the High Country Home Setting channel about a year ago and it's almost been a year since then and I feel very proud of myself. I had been wanting to have some kind of creative outlet for myself just because you know sometimes you get caught up just working all the time and taking care of your family and I wanted to do a little bit of something for myself and feel like I had lost some creativity throughout the years when everything's just been work, work, work all the time. So I decided to create this channel and put some creative effort towards it, as well as the goal was to do things that I love, which was make my home beautiful, 
um, learn how to cook good nourishing meals for my family. We've got chickens in the process, all things that I've been wanting to do, but I knew I needed a way to stick with it and making these videos was that way for me to document it all and make sure that I kept continuing forward instead of just being stagnant like I had felt for a while. And so here I am, if I hadn't had the feeling like I should document these things, then I probably wouldn't have this porch as beautiful as I wanted it to be and would have probably put only a little bit of effort in. But I'm so happy to document it and to put it out here for everyone and I absolutely love how it turned out. It brings me so much joy and it brings my family joy and I'm just really proud of myself. The last final touches I'm gonna to put on here is this spot. I love this porch swing. It came with the house when we bought it, um, but I've never really spruced it up. We just had those really thin pillows on it that don't do much, but this swing has seen a lot of me, especially this summer. It's been the perfect place when there's a breeze outside to have your morning coffee or read a book or especially to watch the kids play on the porch or when they're in the front yard. So since I spend so much time out here whenever I can, I decided it needs to be a little bit comfier. So I grabbed some fall pillows and so I can have a much comfier space to lay my head. And I also grabbed this really cozy blanket now that it's getting chilly outside. It's not quite as nice of a place to hang out for a long time, but if you have the coziness, then it can definitely be done. So this porch swing is gonna see me a lot more often than I did last fall now that it is nice and cozy and welcoming and it's gonna be a real good spot to have some hot chocolate and hot coffee in the mornings and the evenings. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.